Welcome to another Freelance Fridge video tutorial. As always, you can visit me at FreelanceFridge.com for all your custom art needs or questions. And then also, you can visit me at ChillOutArtShop.com for high quality vector artwork of all sorts and varieties. Today we're going to talk about taking a inked image like this gorilla here and converting it in, into a nice clean finished vector art piece. A lot of people when they're using um, drawings they'll recreate them using the pen tool in Illustrator or something like that and I feel like I have a much better way or quicker way to do it especially for screen printing and things where time is crucial. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take my nice cleaned artwork um, at 200 to 300 dpi. Just going to drag and drop that into Illustrator. I'm going to click on my image. I'm going to go to Object, Live Trace, click on Tracing Options, and this brings up my Tracing Options window. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. I already have a preset here. So if I go under my little triangle here near the live, live trace button, I'm going to click on the preset that I already have, and it's going to automatically vectorize the image. Then I'm going to go into my options here, those tracing options. I'm going to show you what I use. I have uh, the mode at black and white, threshold at 165 as default. That can go up and down depending on each image. Blur at 0.7. Also, that can go up and down depending on each image. Um, trace settings, fills only, uncheck strokes. Also, path fitting 2.2, minimum area 5, corner angle 38. And as you're working on images, you may want to bring up these tracing options for each one because you might want to edit certain little aspects of it to kind of tweak it and... Uh, see if it works a little bit better. Kind of takes a little bit of getting used to knowing what to change here. Mostly you're going to change the threshold and the blur as necessary. But usually the default does a pretty good job. I'm going to hit trace because I'm happy with those results. And then I need to click the expand button up here at the top and that kind of just finalizes everything that I've done. And the bitmap image is all completely gone and I just have my vector art here. So at this point we're just going to ungroup it, object ungroup, and the first thing we'll do is this outside area there's this uh, colored white box surrounding our image that's been vectorized too but we don't need that so we're just gonna press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it and at this point um, I wanna show you this black silhouette here if I move it off to the side, you'll see all those shapes on top are cut out of this black area as well. We don't need that because it's going to make it harder to um, clean it up and color the artwork. So we're just going to go back and click on that black silhouette around the outside edge of our illustration. And we're going to go to Object, Compound Path, Release. Now before you do anything else after this step, don't unclick anything. Just hold down shift on your keyboard and click on the outside edge area to deselect that specific piece. Now we're going to hit delete on our keyboard and that's going to get rid of all those cut shapes that were inside of that outside silhouette. Now that we're done there, I'm pretty much finished with what I need in Illustrator. I use the Illustrator Live Trace feature because I feel like it's better than the Corel Trace feature. So I'm going to go to Save As. I'm just going to title it something that I can remember. Saving it as an AI file. And you'll want to save it down to a version that's compatible with your version of Corel Draw. 
I'm going to save it down to 10 because I'm using Corel Draw X3 and that version works pretty well with it. And then just go ahead and close it. You can pull up Corel Draw, go to your folder where your image is, and then just drag and drop that AI file into Corel Draw. And then you can see we have the same vector artwork that we had in Illustrator. The first thing I'm going to do, again, I'm going to be working with that black silhouette around the outside. I select that, just color it a color, a different color than black. And you'll see we have all these black pieces on top, which we don't need because they're already trimmed out of the white pieces. So we're going to go to Edit, Find and Replace, Replace Objects, hit Next, and Find other. I already know what black that is, what specific color that is, so I'm going to go to grayscale, drag this all the way to the bottom until this says black here, hit OK, hit finish, and then it brings up this toolbar set. I'm going to hit find all. That's going to select all the black in my image. I'm going to go ahead and click out of this, and then I'm going to press delete on my keyboard. So now I just have the black silhouette with all the white pieces on top. I'm going to go, go ahead and apply a Pantone color to the silhouette. So we have a Pantone black on there. And at this point I'm ready to go ahead and clean and color this image. So I'm going to use my shape tool, the second tool on your toolbar here. And I can go in here and I can double click on the node to delete it. I can move these beziers as necessary, cleaning up the artwork. Now this artwork in particular, I wanted it nice and crisp. It's kind of this retro pen art style. Um, so I took some time to really clean this up well on the actual version I have, which I'll show you in a minute. But what you'll have to keep in mind is there's a lot of node editing tools up here on your presets for this shape tool feature um, that could be really beneficial like if you want to click on a line you can go ahead and make it a straight line and it converts it to a straight line or if you have a straight line and you don't want it straight you can click on the curve and it'll change it to a curve that you can edit and then on a node itself if you want to make it smooth, it'll make it so that both sides of the bezier move together. Or if you want to make it a cusp, you can break it and it'll let you move each side independently. Now those features can be a little annoying to go up here all the time to use them or to right click on a node to try to use them that way. So what I've done is I've created shortcut keys for those since I use them so often. So if you right click on your shape tool, go to customize, toolbar item, properties, you can actually go to commands here, click on the shortcut keys tab, and then you're going to go to the edit tab rollout there. And then just scroll down until you see around node edit and underneath of there you'll see these options for two line, two curve, cusp, and smooth. Those are the four that you're going to apply a short key to. I've used page up, page down, insert, and home. So you can apply whatever keys that work for you. So as I go through, go around this image while you're watching, I'll be using those shortcut keys, but you won't be seeing me use them, obviously. But that's how I can quickly and easily clean up artwork. And I won't go ahead and clean up the whole thing because there's limits on the video. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here and you can imagine that I've already cleaned up my artwork the way that I wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and click on certain shapes. I go over coloring 
an image in another tutorial. So I'll just go over a quick basic of using shift on your keyboard and right clicking and dragging from a color that you like to an area that you want to be that color. So that's just shift, right click and drag to drag and drop a color over. Like so. So if I minimize this like they do on the cooking shows and go to the final image I have the f final nice cleaned artwork colored the way I want to, crisp and ready to go.